All righty, ladies and gentlemen, little AE Dub <laughs> Revolution, cheap name, cheap title for a pay per view there, Revolution Review. I just feel drained. This show just sucked the life out of me there. I feel like I haven't slept in four or five days. It's like a fucking big, big ass sleeping pill. Feels like I watch TNA there, all of that. Just definitely not worth 50 bucks or whatever. I paid $44.99 for this shit. Why I did that, I have no fucking clue. There was absolutely nothing worth paying for on this show. Just the elite, which aren't really stars themselves couple of WWE guys washed up WWE guys there. Um, just definitely not worth the 50 bucks that I fucking paid for this. After a little while watching this, it's like, okay, this is TNA and it's not worth 50 bucks. Why did I pay for this shit? I could have just watched matches here and there on YouTube or something like this. The fuck was I thinking paying money for this crap there? First match, Jake Hager, Hager, Jack Swagger defeated Dustin Rhodes. It was a pretty boring match, you know. Dustin Rhodes had a couple of... Good matches in AEW. This wasn't one of them. You know what I mean? Like, serious, bad guy, MMA swagger is fucking boring. You know, WWE gave him some goofiness to try to give him a bit of character. And here he's just bland as a motherfucker. And the match was just boring, in my opinion. Nothing special here. He won with some cheap-looking MMA finisher of some sort. Some kind of crap with his arm. It just looked cheap as fuck there. Apparently, he used this in, in the MMA world. But in terms of wrestling, the move looked like shit. I don't know there. Just looked really cheap. And it ended like that and just felt cheap for me uh, to open the show like this. Second match, Darby Allin defeated Sammy Guevara. Just, you know, a midget match or whatever. Allen did a big-ass botch, a, a dive botch, and he completely missed the mark or whatever. Um, you had kicks, you had flips, and I didn't give a shit, ladies and gentlemen. Third match, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page defeated the Young Bucks. Um, you had some cool indie moves or whatever, but it just felt like way too long for me personally. You know, it's the same indie match. It's Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, doing the same moves. You know, for 40 minutes, we get it. The indie fans like this crap. But, you know, for me personally, like 40 minutes of these nerdy fucking losers there, I can do without. You know what I mean? Um, Kenny's a good wrestler, but... You know, it's an okay match, but after all this time, kick out after kick out, head bump after head bump, super kick, super kick. The match ends with a clothesline that just feels flat. You kick out of a hundred finishers or potential finishers, ends with a clothesline. Just feels flat, you know what I mean? And it just felt way too long. And like halfway through, I just wanted the shit to end. It wouldn't end. And when it did end, I just didn't care anymore. Fourth match, Nyla Rose defeated Chris Statlander. 
just boring women's wrestling there. Um, with that Nyla Rose, she's a real woman. I tell you what, they're a real woman at Nyla Rose there. But the match wasn't really good or anything there. Fifth match, MJF defeated Cody Rhodes. Um, the biggest move of the match was MJF biting Cody Rhodes' foot for some reason. He had a broken toe, so he just stuck his whole foot in his mouth and he was biting his foot, you know. He has a sore toe, he's biting his foot, but still having a man's foot in his mouth just doesn't look right. It's just feels like I'm watching weirdo gay porn that I shouldn't be watching, you know. And the finisher just looked cheap. MJF with the ring, a goofy, fake-looking punch. Cody was just knocked out cold. It just looked ridiculous, the finish. Finish was fucking straight-up amateur hour. It looked like trash there. And that's how it ended. <laughs> Pretty cheap, I think, you know. They want to put MJF over. Oh, Cody's going to put people over. But when MJF won, the whole crowd was like in shock. The indie fans were all heartbroken. It was all faces like they were in shock. But it did feel like the wrong guy won, or at least the way it ended, it was just cheap. So maybe people didn't think it would end like that. I don't know there, but it just looked bad at the end. Sixth match, Pac or Neville there defeated Orange Cassidy. Um... Cassidy was probably the, the most funny or entertaining part of the show. Him rolling on the ground was a little funny. A couple things he did there. He did some regular wrestling too. Um, the fans were into it. I think Orange Cassidy should have won. It was his first match. Um, they do a big thing. It's his first match on the pay-per-view. He gets beat, you know, pretty cheap there. Um, so the match itself was okay. He was doing some okay stuff. Like, I've seen some of his matches on YouTube. Some of it gets old after a while because it's always the same shit. It stops being funny after a little bit there, but... He could have at least won this match. He did some, some decent stuff here. And he loses. <laughs> the only guy that was actually a bit entertaining and he gets beat. <laughs> bit, bit of a fucking downer. I don't know. Oh, this is fun promotion. and It's like all the results just suck the life out of you there. It's just boring <laughs> as fuck. Um, and the main event... John Moxley defeated Chris Jericho to win the world championship there. Um, you know, Jericho just looked old and fat in this match. He had a thing around his neck like a cowboy, like a handkerchief around his neck. He just looked old and fat or whatever. Um... You know, he was attacking his eye at the end. Moxley took off his eye patch. Oh, he's okay. He can see. He was able to see all along. So we spent a month doing retarded garbage with the eye. And then he was able to see. Oh, this is amazing new wrestling. This is shit from the 60s. They were doing these eye things. From the fucking 1960s, the 70s and shit. This is nothing new at all there. AEW fans, it's a revolution. No, it's like an old gimmick from 50 years ago with the eye patches and shit. But, you know, it just seemed like a sloppy wrestling match. Um, a bunch of interference just... 
just a big bunch of lame, boring bullshit. I just wanted this to end as well. I was fucking starting to pass out on the couch. It was hard getting fucking straight up hard to stay awake during the scrap there. And it's a Saturday night. I woke up at like noon. I should have energy, but this just fucking sucked it right out of me there. Um, I don't know. This whole thing there, it's not worth 50 bucks. Kenny Omega, what is it? His fucking nerdy Nintendo music and the Young Bucks. MJF with Cody's foot in his mouth there. Just, I don't know. Definitely not my fucking style of wrestling. This ain't really good wrestling, to be honest. The Smarks are into this. The indie retards. Uh, the SJW fans or whatever with their little rainbow flags. They're into this there, but... As a man who grew up watching real wrestling from back in the day there, this definitely isn't worth 50 bucks, and it's nothing special, straight up. I thought, as a pay-per-view overall, this was just boring and not really entertaining for real indie fans. <laughs> They'll mark out for everything, but honestly, I... Don't think this was truly entertaining. It's wrestling. It's guys doing wrestling moves, but it's not entertaining for real. It's boring as shit. And Moxley at the end, uh, the promo, um, you know, oh, it's, it's beer time or something. It's beer o'clock. Then he just didn't know what to say. <laughs> Then his music starts playing. What, what the fuck? I'm, I'm going to drink whiskey. Just fucking lame sauce. Just look like total amateur hour there. You know, if the, the goofs, indie goofs want to jack off to this, they're good for them. But this ain't really good wrestling at all. It's overrated fucking garbage. Indie fucking trash. Until next time, peace. Ha! Another WWE guy as champion. This is different. Another WWE guy as champion. All right, there. Cool story, bro. Peace, fucking losers.